The truth about earwigs and laying eggs in your ear. To answer the question of whether earwigs actually like to go in your ear and lay eggs or not, we'll start off talking about the mating habits of the earwig. To make baby earwigs, the male grabs and holds the female, and then, literally, bumps uglies. The eggs may not fertilize immediately, the sperm can hang around for several months before fertilizing the eggs, but ultimately they will. At some point, the lady comes to her senses, no doubt realizing the male is super creepy looking, and exiles him from the nest. Yes, nest. That's not in your ear. Then she lays anywhere between 20 and 80 eggs. After hatching, earwigs develop in a series of five stages, each grosser than the last. The mother earwig, unlike most non-social insects, actually guards her young. Throughout their development, earwigs retain that familiar, handsome profile. There seems to be a consensus that people have always thought the earwig would climb into your ear if given a chance. In fact, the name is thought by most etymologists to come from two Old English words that mean ear insect, earae weaker. While most humans have long associated the insect with burrowing into ears, in reality, this almost never happens, and even when it does, they aren't going to lay their eggs in there and burrow into your brain. Earwigs simply like moist, dark places to hide, but they choose these places for daytime hiding, not at night when you are presumably sleeping. At night, they hunt for insects and plants to eat. That being said, throughout history, there have been anecdotal reports of earwigs being found inside people's ears. One story submitted to the bug doctor by a man known only as Frank goes like this. At 3 a.m., my eight-year-old daughter awoke me from a sound sleep. She was extremely upset. For the preceding few minutes, she had attempted to remove a creature crawling about in her left external ear canal. A light sleeper, she had been aroused by the sound of little feet. Otoscopic examination revealed a dark brown mass near the tympanic membrane. My brief discussion with her on the importance of proper hygiene was interrupted when I saw the form move. Then, bathed in brilliant illumination from the otoscope, a female earwig, measuring 20 millimeters in length, cautiously emerged to the relief of insect, child, and father. While this story may or may not be made up, it doesn't seem too far-fetched to think that at some point in human history, possibly many times, an earwig crawled into a person's ear canal. As stated, there are many anecdotal stories, some even well documented, of this sort of thing happening, along with similar occurrences from many other small insects. Insects like exploring, and if you let them crawl all over your body, eventually one might dink around in your ear canal for a bit to see what's there. But regardless, once there, the female earwig certainly isn't going to find it a good environment to mate and nest. If left alone in the ear, she would not burrow into a person's brain and lay her eggs. Besides the fact that the ear canal and brain wouldn't make a very good nest, this simply isn't possible considering the amount of bone and other tissue the earwig isn't equipped to burrow through. At best, the earwig can use their pincers on you, but even these aren't strong enough to do any real damage. As for their often slimy appearance, leading some to believe that this is from earwax, this likely comes from the damp crevices where they reside, as well as the waxy secretions from their abdominal gland. Bonus facts Nocturnal earwigs come out to feed at night. They love decaying organic matter like dead leaves, but also eat a variety of other insects, including mites and aphids. Omnivorous, they eat beneficially healthy plants too. Although there are nearly 2,000 different species of earwigs, why god, why? The one most of us flinch from is the Forificula auricularia. Bonus fact 2. If you are unlucky enough to have an earwig or any other insect crawl into your ear, there are a few simple steps to removing it. Number 1. Don't stick anything in your ear, not a finger or a q-tip. Poking at the insect may cause it to bite or sting. Number 2. Lay your head flat, infested ear facing up. Say a prayer to your higher power of choice that the insect will crawl out on its own. If it doesn't, proceed to step 3. Step 3. Have someone pour baby or olive oil in your ear, pulling the lobe as they pour. For children, the lobe should be pulled backward and downward. For adults, it should be moved backward and upward. It is hoped that the insect will drown and then drain out with the oil. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.